Today I am headed out of Maine, eastern Maine, into uh, Canada to Campbell Island. And it's an international park, only way one way in and out, and that's uh, out of Maine. So I'm going to go in there and hopefully be able to get back into the States. All right. So let's see how this goes. I'm just waiting in line here to uh, go through uh, Im immigration, checkpoint, whatever it is. But this is the Bay of Fundy, which I, seems to me that it's got like really high tides around here. So um, it's pretty cool. I'm not sure if it's low tide or what, but. Well, going through uh, the entry, not a problem. And took uh, Badge's advice and said a lot of, no sir, yes sir. And uh, didn't try to hide anything or any crazy stuff like that. So I am uh, gonna go to uh, FDR's beloved cottage here in Campobello and see what that's like. Let's go. Well, the story behind Campobello Island is quite interesting. In um, 1881, a group of American businessmen bought the land on the island with the idea of building a large resort hotels. And, and back in that era, there were large hotels all over the place. Um, there used to be one near where uh, I used to live, near Point Breeze in New York. And uh, up in the Adirondacks, uh, Paul Smith had one. Well, they decided, they built a, a couple of big hotels. There was one that had uh, 30 rooms. But the, they decided to make a little bit more money and sell lots. So the Roosevelt's bought one. There was one right here for James and Sarah Roosevelt. And there's a picture down here of of that one, it was a Queen Anne style. And they didn't sell as many as they thought they were going to, and it did become a summer retreat. People would come, the, the wealthy, well-to-do people would come up here and spend the entire summer, get away from the heat of the city, and enjoy country life. The There was a butler cart they called it they came in here with fresh vegetables and fruits uh, there was a dairy cart that would come through delivering milk once a week and they uh, if you wanted newspapers and magazines and such you had to send away for them but this is uh, the site of James and Sarah's house and again another beautiful view through the trees but this is what it uh, it looked like. And one very interesting, unique feature is they had a, a big tank, saltwater tank in there. Oh, an eagle just flew by. They had a saltwater tank that James would soak in daily to help with his arthritis. If you remember from one of my previous videos that uh, down in Hyde Park, James and Sarah were Franklin's parents and he was their only so child. And next door where we're gonna go is the, was the Kuhn, K-U-H-N cottage. And Sarah bought it for her son, Franklin. And that became his beloved uh, Campobello. Eleanor came up here in 1904 and vacationed up here and maybe that's where some of the romance uh, happened because they were married in 1905. So let's go over to Franklin and Eleanor's place and check that out. This is FDR's cottage and by cottage you go by rich people standards of the times. It's 
Let's see, my grandpa's cottage was about the size of this section right here. So, in a few minutes, we'll go inside and take a tour. So here's the family here, 1920. Of course, that was before Franklin uh, got polio. And not a big surprise that Sarah puts herself in the middle. This was, was originally the children's playroom when they added this 10th room addition. But after Franklin got polio, he made this into his, his parlor, his sitting room, entry room, whatever. But that's why there's a ramp here so, and a bed. Franklin and he used time, this room at that. So a nice sitting room. Franklin's telescope over there so you could watch the fishermen, see what they were really catching. So in the dining room here, this megaphone would hang on a chain out on the porch and Eleanor would use it to call the children in. And it's been said that the, uh, on a calm day, you could hear Eleanor over in Eastport, over there if you can see through the windows. So, nice kitchen, and they did have, as you may have guessed by seeing the pipes, did have running water. They had a uh, windmill that would pump the water up to the third floor, and gravity feed down through here, and of course, a little bit fancier than the ones we saw at some of the other places, was that the wood stove would heat the water and store it in this big uh, copper. And next to the kitchen, sharing a flue, it looks like, is the laundry room. And a stove to heat up the irons and so on. Now, they didn't drink the water that came out of that well. They would go to a local well and bring back water in big glass. So even though they didn't have electricity here until 1950, they did have this battery-powered thing down here in the kitchen that if you press the room or a button in one of the rooms and the arrow would pop up and bell would ring and let the servants know where they were needed and they'd have to take the batteries over to Eastport to get them recharged every once in a while. Okay, so this is the, the master bedroom and that if you hear that Franklin got polio here, he actually contracted it at a Boy Scout camp in New York and then they came up here and had a very long day out and uh, got, was really tired, came up here to rest and this is where it, it hit him. And right next door to Franklin's room is Louis Howe's room. Louis Howe was his political mastermind that uh, was behind uh, his Franklin's successes starting back in 1912. See, the servants' bedrooms weren't that bad. They still had the same view. And of course, there's quite a few of them. This one's a little bit bigger. So, way ahead of their time. A toilet room next to the bathroom. When the family had come up here, in the summer, they would bring a tutor with them. And just because it was summer, didn't mean the kids weren't learning. So they would be um, for eight to 12 every day, Monday through Friday, they would have the tutor teaching them. And of course, the Roosevelt's both were very pro -ed. This is Elliot's room. And Right across from that was the children's um, bathroom. So all in one room, not like the adults, one at the other. This is uh, John and Franklin Jr.'s room. They had the biggest bedroom here. And of course there's had chamber pots because Franklin didn't want the, the children wandering around with uh, kerosene lanterns. He feared for so as I mentioned inside, Franklin was afraid of fire in the house. That's why he didn't want the kids walking around at night with kerosene lanterns and candles going to the bathroom. And I didn't know that uh, Eleanor was afraid of water. 
and Franklin could really push her buttons by dousing her. But the uh, this is the water side of the cottage, but it faces out here on the Bay of Fundy. Now I came across on a bridge, but they would come across from Eastport and Eleanor, this, well the Bay of Fundy and this part of it, have, the tides are about 28 feet. So they can, water can move about five feet an hour up and down, where at the throat of it, or the entrance, it's got the highest tides in the world of 58 feet, and it can move like 10 feet an hour. I can't imagine being afraid of water, having to bring all those children, servants, 40 trunks of luggage across the bay from Eastport. I'm sure she made sure they timed it during high tide and slack tide so that the water was as calm as it could possibly be. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to say goodbye to Campobello and the Roosevelt's summer retreat. He only came up here in, uh, after he got polio in 21, he came up here late in, uh, I think 31 he came up again, and maybe a couple other times later on, but the, uh, the trip up here just was too much. So I'm going to get on the road and see what else I can find. See you later, YouTube. What they're talking about here is in order to get to the lighthouse over there, you have to go down on the beach, work your way around, and that pathway leads to a walkway that gets to that to go up and over. So I'm looking at they aren't kidding about the tide or the currents in here. I mean, there's no way anybody in their right mind would swim through that. Monday morning and I'm leaving Campbella Island or at least I'm headed that way and we'll see if their website is correct and all I need is a birth certificate to my driver's license to get across. I'm pretty sure it is but we'll find out. That was easy enough. You know, they, they definitely want to look around inside, open up a few things, you know, so not a problem getting back. They did want to know if I had a passport or had ever had a passport before. And I did, but I let it lapse. I haven't got a new one. So before I head up into Canada again, I suppose I should get 